All right, how's it going out there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at here on this uh, fine Tuesday, 11.56 a.m. West Coast time, July 1st, 2025. Middle of the summer. It's going to start getting hot out here in California, goodness. Uh, latest activity shows a 1.0 there across the California area. Got a, quite a few microquakes out here today and some from uh, yesterday as well. Got that little swarm of activity off the coast there of Santa Barbara uh, from yesterday. I don't see any new quake activity there uh, so far today. Most of the movement uh, well inland there across the Garlock Fault shear zone with a 1.3. Also quite a bit of clustering going on here at the southern end of the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Got uh, five earthquakes here in the last hour. Very small microquakes. But uh, starting to show out here that we're getting some movement and some adjustment uh, taking place out here. And that's a time when we need to be on guard for some further pressurization. And, of course, all it takes is, a, you know, maybe a little, a little bump there on the uh, plate boundary. And that could trigger the strain that's built up out there for over 300 years along the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. So watch that closely. Also up north here around the San Luis Reservoir, the state reservoir up here. A uh, number of earthquakes here from yesterday. Newer activity up north here along the southern end of the Calaveras Fault Zone with a 2.6 and a little clustering going on here. But uh, last night and today it looks like this area definitely uh, showing some signs here of some strain. Also keep an eye there on the Parkfield segment of the San Andreas Fault. Got, uh, well, very close here. Looks like there's been a couple earthquakes there around Avenal just off the Parkfield segment. But uh, this Parkfield segment should be uh, coming up here on an earthquake soon, as far as at least a 6.0 goes. It's got these regular occurrence intervals, reoccurrence intervals that uh, take place every 20 to 22 years. And the last one was back in 2004. Earthquakes out there in northwestern Nevada, all within minutes of each other today. Number of, uh, one, uh, well, we got a one-pointer, two-pointer, three-pointer, oh, a couple two-pointers out there. This is outside the Sheldon National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, normally, that's a sign here of uh, increasing pressurization there across the uh, uh, northern California region due to the San the uh, excuse me the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Uh, right now, two earthquakes just after mid one just after midnight, 3.1, and then another 2.6 here uh, a couple hours ago. So things are increasing here across this area, resulting in further strain inland. Uh, up into the Washington area, one earthquake, well, a couple earthquakes around Mount Rainier. Really nothing big going on up there. Those are all very small microquakes. Uh, inland, across the rest of the uh, country here, some small activity around Utah. Up into Wyoming, nothing showing on the map there, but I do want to just uh, double check here real quick. See what we got. Uh, really don't see a whole lot of earthquake activity. Pretty quiet out there across the uh, Yellowstone National Park region. Uh, these may be very small microquakes, possibly, uh, but just limited to this area around Pitchstone Plateau. I don't see any of that showing up, though, on nearby stations. So hard to say on if that's any type of earthquake activity. If it is, it's very small, very small. Uh, further out across the country here, Texas oil field, same out there around Tennessee. Got one earthquake this morning, a 2.3. Nothing big going on there for now. Uh, look at the globe here, or the flat scale model Earth, the largest magnitude here in the last 24 hours goes to a 5.1. And that's actually from yesterday. So, so far after midnight, 4.9 there across the uh, Sumatra area, just off the coast there, 16 miles deep. Uh, northern edge of the Java Trench. Let's see what we got uh, for that 4.9 earthquake. Looks like there's a little sequence of events in there that's going to be this little cluster also up north there around the Myanmar area getting some uh, earthquake activity uh, movement here across Japan again continuing putting the Nankai trough there on the on the strain level definitely uh, building up quite a bit of strain around that segment of the subduction zone it's very easy to see here on the satellite imagery major subduction zone right here we also got subduction zones down here as well um, but the main focus, I believe, it's possible we could see some larger activity down here. But with all this movement happening south and north here of the subduction zone uh, around this area, and also some back over here across the western coast of uh, Japan, puts this area in a prime zone for some uh, big earthquake activity. It's got to be building up there across that subduction zone. 
Uh, it has for a little while, and uh, that's very possible where we could see our next mega quake. Which is, uh, I'm sure it's coming up here because our last eight pointer, anything above eight pointer, I, I consider a mega quake. Uh, our last one was back in 2021, so four years, and, and technically we should see at least one eight pointer every year, if not every year, every other year. So things are building up here somewhere. Uh, a couple earthquakes, as I noted here so far today, 4.9, and a couple 4.6s there in that area, southern end of the Nankai Trough. Watch that closely. Big Island Hawaii showing some movement out here. Nothing big, just a handful of earthquakes. Pause in the uh, eruption there for now. We'll get, I'm sure we'll get uh, to the episode 28 here in a number of days. Alaska area, nothing big going on there for now. Mostly small microquake activity. In fact, that pretty much removes all the earthquakes uh, when we select that option. So just a typical microquake movement out there today. Around the rest of the globe. Uh, let's see what we got here. A little earthquake in Australia, 3.5. New Zealand's starting to show some signs out here. Movement once again, 4.9 and a 3.9. Off of the Alpine Fault here, South Island region. Bunch of movement up north as well. You know, and that kind of puts a prime zone of the Alpine Fault and areas up north there uh, in that uh, hazard zone. Watch that closely. Definitely more uh, uptick going on here today across the area of New Zealand. Had some deeper activity up north there across the Tonga Trench. Things are on the move. No big earthquake activity yet, but uh, the plates are shuffling. And when they're shuffling, that's when things happen. Uh, Middle America Trench, South America area as well. Pretty uh, clustered out here, but that's pretty much common on any given day. It's a major subduction zone. If we had that up here across California, we'd be talking about earthquakes in this magnitude range every single day. But that just doesn't happen because of the type of uh, plate system we live uh, we we're on out here across the west coast the transform boundary here strike slip where the plates uh, kind of slide past each other here the subduction zone got one plate uh, uh, the cocos plate here uh, diving underneath a portion of the north american plate and the uh, um, caribbean plate here same for the peru chile trench that's a major subduction zone all right, uh, let's see if there's anything else going on across the globe. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Older movement out there across the Mediterranean today. Not a whole lot of newer activity. Uh, just keep an eye on these uh, regions out here. Definitely got a uh, whole bunch of movement down south here. This is our hot spot, it looks like, today. A lot of newer quake activity. All right, uh, space weather activity. Anything uh, major going on? <laughs> yeah, solar minimum. Well, not yet. I mean... We still got a number of years before we reach solar minimum. Uh, we're just coming off the peak there of solar maximum, so we should still see, you know, at least here for the next year or two, some decent flares. But uh, right now, way down into the B flare category. Take a look here at the magnetogram image of the sun. Shows a whole bunch of sunspots out here, but look how they're deteriorating. This one here has just gone from a little bit of activity to pretty much nothing. Separation of all the cores out there indicating that these are all rapidly dying. Uh, so I don't expect any flaring activity here for near term. Things are dropping way down into the green across the entirety of the solar flare threat. Maybe a decent chance for some aurora activity here coming up on the July 2nd time period. That looks like it includes tonight. So if things cooperate there with the uh, real-time solar wind data, you know, the BZ component there, uh, then we could be talking about some aurors up to the G1 class storm category. There's a view line. But that's if everything plays out. Uh, Storm Prediction Center out here for severe weather. We've got a slight risk added onto the map there across South Dakota and Nebraska, it looks like. Um, no tornado threat. Wind and uh, just a little bit of hail threat out there today for a Tuesday. I know we've got some thunderstorm chances up here where I'm at today in Northern California. Look at that, 70% chance. You don't see that very often up here across Northern California. Redding up here in the Sacramento Valley, northern end is in the 40%. I'm down here outside of Chico in the 10%. So that's, uh, even so, that's kind of decent there. We'll see what it kicks up. Uh, just some, um, I believe that's a portion of the, uh, some monsoonal moisture coming in. Let's go over here to the satellite view. Oh, there's a monsoonal moisture. This is just looks like there's a low pressure forming in here. Probably tapping into some of that moisture out there. But, uh, yeah, these are going to kick up later tonight. And uh, 
I, I would love to see the storms kick up down here around Chico, but uh, it's we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Definitely up in the southern Oregon and northern California, so we'll watch for that. The uh, let me show you guys the Cape values out there. They're quite high. A lot of mountain, a lot of Cape values for thunderstorms up there in the mountains. Uh, they will increase through the afternoon. Uh, this is kind of interesting. Just around Chico here, we got decent. Uh, over to Orland as well, decent shot of maybe seeing some thunderstorm activity. We'll see how that plays out. I would love a nice little shower. A lot of lightning strikes up there being observed. Uh, and I believe there's a couple new fires as well. I'll get off of that. Did not mean to click on that. Uh, let's go back here to the fire map. Here we go. In Northern California showing uh, quite a few fires out there. Um, let's see what we got for big ones here. I don't see any big ones out there, but there's numerous fires that were started, I'm sure, from the lightning strikes. Uh, hopefully that doesn't kick up more today, but I'm I'm guessing it probably will because we do have quite a few lightning strikes uh, uh, with these thunderstorms when they pop up. All right, uh, seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet for now. San Juan Matista down here doing a little bit of, looks like, bunch of uh, repetitive smaller earthquake activity I don't think any of that is showing there on the map but um, it's really I'm, most of that activity is way down south here but there is some movement showing up there so we'll just be on guard today Mendocino picking up a little small earthquake right now it looks like but uh, nothing of any large nature for now hope everyone enjoys their Tuesday Welcome to July. I I don't like July out here in Northern California. It's just too hot. Too hot. Everyone thinks it's 70 degrees all summer out here in Northern Ca or in California, right? They think of ocean beaches and stuff like that. Yeah, that's that's if you're along the extreme coastline, but here in the Sacramento and San Joaquin Valley, it's pretty much like a death valley out here. A big one though. And uh, it gets hot. We're supposed to be 102 today. That's um probably around average <laughs> I need to live somewhere where 102 is never heard of or at least maybe happens once in every 10 years or something that would be nice anyway have yourself a wonderful Tuesday uh, yeah Southern California lighting up out here quite a bit right now so uh, just be on guard we'll see you guys out here a little bit later on this evening folks take care